Hey guys, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I want to be showing you how to create this Adventure Monoline logo just using simple paths and shapes in Illustrator CC. You can see here we've created it. it looks kind of cool. I can go ahead and you know play around the color, and it's awesome. It's a cute little badge. You can use it for a logo or just for fun. I kind of like it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna help you make this. First off, we're just gonna start off with an artboard, and you see I've got a light background. You can use you know any type of background you want. Um, I just like working with the light. It's got some a little bit of yellow in it. But what we're going to do first is start off with a circle. So we're going to press L for the ellipse tool. You can see I've got my shape tools here. You can click on the ellipse tool. And what we're going to do, holding Shift and Alt, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be Option or Command. And I'm just going to drag out a circle. And I've got my color there, and it's on 10 points. I kind of like it working with thick lines, so I can bump it up if I want, or just go back down. I'm going to scale it. What I'm going to do is zoom in. I'm going to select this, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my little selection tool up here and go to Artboard. So it's going to align to the Artboard now, as you can see. And I'm going to align clicking the horizontal and the vertical. So now it's going to be directly in the center. So this is going to be a, a base shape that we're going to be working with. So I'm just going to select it and press Control 2. You can also go Object, Lock, and lock the selection. And that's going to lock this shape because we don't really need it live at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is start off with a path. So I'm going to press P and my smart guides are turned on. This is going to help me find the center really easy. And sometimes if you can't find the center, you can press command or control Y. And that's going to go into outline mode. And you can see here, this is the center point of this circle. So I can always go back to the center. We want to try and keep this monoline badge um, symmetrical and that's going to make it easier to duplicate things and make it all even and look nice so that that can help you as well and then press Control y to get out of that so what I'm going to do I'm going to find the middle bit as you can see and I'm just going to do a line use my selection tool and just drag that up like this I'm going to make this line a little bit wider and what I'm going to do now I'm going to select this and when you make your lines bigger if your lines are scaling up, that's because you have scale on, stroke and effects on. So if you go to window and transform, you get this little box pop up. And what you want to do is actually click on the little hamburger with the four lines and you want to select it and you want to turn off scale strokes and effects. So that's going to keep all your strokes at the same width and it's not going to change it. And you can always change it back later. So keep in mind, we're keeping the stroke width the same throughout the whole um, design. So you wanna make sure this is turned off. So back to the design, what we're gonna do, select this line. I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and click and drag down, making some space there. And what I'm gonna do is press Control D a couple times, as you can see there. And what I'm gonna do now is select all of these lines. Go to the top left corner, press Effect, go to Distort and Transform and go to zigzag, which is the last one there. Now what we want to do is change the options. We want to click on relative and change it to smooth. And we also want to click on preview so we can see what we're doing here with the lines. And you can see here it's too much. So I'm going to drag the size down. So we're trying to make some ocean waves. You don't want it too harsh. And I'm going to change the ridges. And you can see how I'm um, increasing the ridges. It increases the amount of waves. You can make it look very wavy or less wavy. Try and put it on an even number where the waves on the edges here sort of end the same. So you can see this one goes down and this bit goes up. So I'm going to try and match match it. As you can see there. So this is matching, which is what I want. So that's on 7 and on 1%. And press OK. And now you can see... The stroke, it's curvy, but it still only has the line. It's only registering it as a straight line. We want to go back to the stroke so we can edit it. So we, right now, we can't really edit it. We can only move it. So what I can do, select it, go to Object and Expand Appearance. And what it's going to do is turn it back to the stroke. So it's going to add the anchor points and turn all this to a stroke. Now I'm going to select all these. I'm going to unlock the circle as well. I'm going to hold shift, select all these lines, and then press shift M or go to the shape builds tool on the left in the middle section. 
I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag and minus off the edges here, just like that. So we get we cut out those lines and now you can see we just got these lines and it's directly on the circle line. So it's all perfect. And that's looking pretty cool. It's looking awesome. So what I can do now, I'm just going to add a straight line. So I'm going to left click and hold shift. So we're just going to do it for our land. I might delete this one here and I'm just going to drag this one down like that. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build the little cabin. So I want to find the center point again. So you can see my smart guides is snapping to the middle. So I can use that. I'm just going to click and drag and hold alt to drag this square. Like that. Drag that up, press M and make another square. Now we're going to do the roof. So it's like a wooden cabin. And I'll add another one. So I'm just holding Alt and Shift to keep the constraints and proportions. And just drag it straight up um, vertically. And just add a bit there like that. So we've got our little hut. And then I'm going to add some lines across here. can see the smart guides helping and I don't want it directly in front of the door so what I can do now select the door and just color it with the color as the same color as the background as I have here and I'm just going to go to object arrange and we're going to bring it to the front so now you can see it's on top of that and we've got some nice lines here we might just move it slightly down to add a bit more breathing room and drag this down. So we added more space here. It was too tight, so it looks more even. Looks good. So it's looking good. Awesome. What I'm gonna do now is create like a cypress style tree. So I'm gonna press P for the pen tool and I'm gonna make a line holding shifts to keep the proportions, the angle right on 90 degrees. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just lock this line quickly. I'm gonna press P for the pen tool and I'm going to go to the top and click once, holding shift to keep a 45 degree angle. I'm going to make a little branch like that. I'm going to select this line, hold alt and shift, drag it down. Once you're happy with that spacing, press command or control D and that's going to duplicate it like that. I'm going to select these, press O for the reflect tool, find the center again on this point. And what I'm going to do, hold Alt, left click once. And you want to make sure that you're reflecting these shapes on the other side vertically. So you can turn preview on to see that. And we want to press copy. Once you've done that, you've made your tree just like that. And now I can unlock this stroke and I can just group those together. As you can see now. And now what I can do now is just duplicate that, scale it down a little bit. And voila, you can see the spacing is a bit tighter. It's because they're using all the same stroke width, but that's okay. That's the look we're going for, so that's fine. Once I've done that, I'm going to use the reflect tool again. Locate the center. I'm just going to use these shapes in the middle to find the center. Hold Alt, left click once. Vertical is on, and I'm just going to copy, and that's going to copy that across like that. Sweet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some mountains. So I'm just going to find a point that's pretty high up, roughly around here. And I'm just going to hold shift to get that 45 degree angle. And once again, I'm just going to left click like that. So now it's sort of balancing the piece out and sort of putting things together. You can see how there's a bit, a lot of white space here. We're going to add some clouds, but I'm just going to move these trees a bit. So I'll go one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So four points to the right. You can just use your arrow keys to nudge it. And that's looking nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some clouds. So for the clouds, I'm going to use a circle or an ellipse. So I'm going to make two circles. I'm going to make one. Holding Alt and Shift, dragging that across. And we'll go to the edge of, we'll go to the edge of this circle. I'm going to get a square, find the center. 
drag it out. Once again, I'm going to select all these and use the shape builder tool and hold alt and just left click and minus these shapes. So now I've got this shape. What I can do, I can just bump that up a little bit higher and now I'm just going to nudge this to the left. Select these two together. And what I'm going to do now is go to my Pathfinder tool. And we're going to unite them. So you can click Unite, which is the first button on the shape mode. Like that. And now we've got our cloud. So now it has a white fill in it as well, just to go over the mountain. And I'll use the Reflect tool again. Reflect that across. And what we're going to do finally is add the sun. So I'm just going to add a circle like this. And I'm just going to add some sun rays. So a quick and easy way to do that is press P for the pen tool. I'm going to make a quick stroke, holding shift. It's a bit too long. Make that one shorter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Press R for the rotate tool. The rotate tool is also on the left hand side. You see that's got like a little arrow with dots. And I'm going to find the center of the this circle here. Press Alt. And we're going to leave it on 40. You want to make sure it's a number that's a domin denomination of 360. And we can just press Copy. Now I'm going to press Control D. Just like that. And you can see we've got a cute little sun. If you want to play around with the sizing, Can extend these out. Obviously, if you want, if I want to make it symmetrical, I'll just, I'll use one side. Make this a bit bigger. I'm just gonna hold Shift to keep it in line. I'll delete those. So you can leave it as it is, but this is another way to do it. So I'll make three different sizes. I'll rotate again using the same technique. So I'm going to go on the other side. And you can do it like that. So you get some different variation depending on what you want. Or alternatively, you can use the reflect tool. And I can reflect it across like this. Select these groups. Reflect it. Like that. So there's a few different ways how you can do the sun. It depends on what you want. I kind of like this. This is pretty cool. I might just extend that. Like that. You can play around and have some fun. So there, that's how you make a Monline Adventure logo or, or icon. It's a nice, fun way to do badges. You can play around with monolines. You can, you know, we can make this thicker if you want. You can make it like a thin monoline. It's just a lot of fun playing with that style. I love playing around with it. It's super cool. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know what you think. Let me know on other tutorials on what you want to see. And subscribe to the channel for more content every week.